Hello and welcome to today's session, Managing Data Risks. Today's session is going to be moderated by Teresa Jolly, Marketing at the Ringway Local Authority Hub. I'm now going to leave it over to Teresa and our panellists. Thanks very much and welcome everyone um, to this session where we'll be learning about the data risks and challenges um, that the team at Nottingham and Derby uh, Future Transport Zone are overcoming. Uh, this includes uh, the recent start for the trial of e-scooters. I'd like to introduce our panellists. Uh, firstly, Dr Simon Dale, Principal Officer of Transport Strategy at Nottingham City Council. Hi Simon. Hi there. And Dr Matthew Frost, Director of Undergraduate Studies in the School of Architecture, Building and Civil Engineering at Loughborough University. Hi Theresa. Uh, hi, welcome both. So a quick introduction. Four future transport zones were awarded in the response to the need for rapid scale testing and trialling of new technologies on our local road network. And these were identified as a priority in the future transport strategy. Robust monitoring and evaluation plans are a core component of all four zones to help ensure that rapid learning, testing and adjustment to better inform future policy goals and implementation guidance. Loughborough University are bringing an independent voice and academic rigour to the monitoring and evaluation plan for the Nottingham and Derby FTZ. This is invaluable in helping to navigate the decision making and implementation of technologies across a complex area. So to give us a bit of an intro, Simon, first to you, what was interesting or exciting to you about the opportunity to bid to be part of a future transport zone? Well, um... Um, at Nottingham, we've, we've, we've had a sort of focus for some time on integrated transport provision and the, the opportunity to bid for the future transport zone money mean, meant that we could, we could trial out harnessing new technology to sort of further this, this, this kind of idea of integrated transport. The idea that you know, it, the, the, the new technology will help to improve that provision over and above traditional methods and improve communication with our, our customers, the people who travel around uh, uh, Nottingham and help them plan their journey in a better and more sustainable way. Um, and, you know, it's really exciting to be involved in some of these projects, things like e-scooters, which are a completely new mode of travel, for example, you know, uh, it's not often you get the opportunity to be involved right at the start of something like that. Um, and obviously, um, as I say, it's, it, it, it's the idea of experimenting with new technology, seeing what works and what doesn't, and then taking it forward into our larger sort of uh, transport programme. So it fits quite well with a lot of other schemes we've got going, like the Go Ultra Low scheme, which is, 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 is designed to um, increase the uptake of electric vehicles and the Transforming City Fund which is a large scale funding, which, which all core cities have, have got to, some, to, to a greater or lesser extent to um, uh, um, enable them to, to, to improve their sort of particularly sustainable transport uh, uh, offer. Fantastic. So, um, yeah, I mean, so it all fits very well and then it gives us an opportunity to try new things where perhaps otherwise we wouldn't have been able to. And I gather you've kind of overlaid a few uh, projects that you've been involved with uh, to help make that happen as well, haven't you? And so you've got... Yeah, well, I've, put, I've touched on Go Ultra Low. Sure, yeah, we, we received funding from DFT to, uh, to create a, uh, a data hub for, for particularly real-time transport data, which we've been developing the technical side of with uh, the University of Nottingham. Um, and and that, that, that will lead directly into the future transport zone uh, because it underpins some of the projects within the, the future transport zone scheme. So it's, it's good to, so we'd already started looking at some of the things that we have then got the opportunity to expand on within the future transport zone as a result of gaining that funding. Fab. And I, I think you've explained to me briefly, there are kind of like three, that the hub is kind of, what the data hub is kind of one, of, of several strands and there's two or three other strands as part of the or yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so uh, it's all a bit about terminology isn't it but basically you have the future transport zone uh, uh scheme and then within it three separate 
separate but complementary projects. First of all, is to deliver a mobility as a service, um, which some, some people listening will, well, most people may well have heard of, um, which is, is an app to deliver integrated journey planning, payments, that sort of thing, all in one place. Um, and then um, a series of e-mobility hubs centered in resident, residential areas, depots and campuses. So three different types of hubs across the region. And then that's all going to be underpinned by the, the third uh, project, which is the data hub. And it's the data hub, which we're hoping to plug in. So we've kind of given ourselves a head start, a running start on that with the work we've done through the open data funding uh, and, and the, the application we developed with Nottingham University. I guess the unique selling points of, um, of our scheme are the mobility hubs. Um, that, that also are on some of the, uh, in some of those is autonomous shuttle buses to kind of link external public transport links, the edge of these campuses to, to, to the actual places where people work on them. And, and our mass, our, our mobility as a service uh, uh, project is slightly different because unlike us, it's publicly, public authority led rather than being a private uh, application. So obviously that gives the local authority control of the levers, so to speak, on that to maximise the, the, the transport and social benefit that you derive from various travel patterns. Um, so uh, yes, that's kind of overview of the scheme. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks very much. And, and Matt, I, I gather the connection between Loughborough and Nottingham has existed for, for kind of some time. So yes. can you explain a little bit how that's helped you both in developing uh, in developing the thing and also your role in some of the monitoring and evaluation criteria? Developed? So we, we've had a sort of a, a long-standing relationship with the, with the City Council in Nottingham that sort of is one of the key partners with the F, within the FTZ and, and that goes back probably six, seven years now. Um, we've had a, a, a transport group within the, the school that I'm based and we've sort of brought together a, a team such as myself. I'm a, I'm a civil engineer. We've had some transport economists, uh, transport geographers. Uh, and we started off working with Simon actually on a, on, a, on a project to assist with the evaluation of the workplace parking levy, um, which Simon was able to gain his doctorate through. And uh, that, that was proved a great success. And sort of we were able to support the council in some of their evaluation work with that to, to maybe do some of the things that perhaps they wouldn't normally be able to do within the, the time frame that they would have and provide a bit of extra resource and, and also support that with maybe some questioning and, and, and testing of some of the elements of the evaluation with perhaps a bit more sort of academic underpinning than maybe you get if you were just, just progressing with the evaluation on your own. So, so we've been able to provide, not necessarily say oversight, but support to Simon and the team to, to bolster what they're doing in terms of their evaluation. Um, we've moved that on over recent years and, and the relationship has grown. So we've, we've now got a, a, a project as part of the, the Go Ultra Low scheme that Simon mentioned, looking at um, issues around charging data for electric vehicles and charging patterns within the city and, and sort of supply and demand of charging for electric vehicles. And uh, we've, we've extended that again into um, the FTZ scheme. Um, in part, we've got a, a, a co-funded PhD student who started a month ago working with the city council to look at elements of this as the, as the scheme develops but we also helped Simon sort of having a read through of the evaluation documentation and all the really complex logic maps he put together to sort of look at how we might evaluate the three strands that although somewhat separate to each other actually contribute in a in, a, in an integrated way to bring all this lot together within the within the FTZ and obviously moving forward we've we've sort of post COVID we've added in the uh, some trials of uh, electric scooters into that as well as part of the, the um, government get, drive to think about that. electric scooters so it's it's been good for for I hopefully Simon will agree it's been good for them it's been good for us we get real data that we can analyze at the university you know large data sets available to us we've published joint papers off the back of the work which we send out for peer review perhaps gives a bit more credibility to some of the approaches that they take in terms of the evaluation and I think the, the relationship has been as benefit to uh, all parties in terms of yeah. supporting the work in what, you know, in, in you know, Nottingham has got a fantastic reputation for their 
innovative and forward-looking approach to, to transport and it's been good to be part of that and i think just back in that's fantastic man i think backing that up as well it sounds like there's quite a bit of move for, for some of these larger um kind of in situ schemes like the ftz there's there's been a move more recently hasn't there to um to make the evaluation and monitoring component of it both overall nationally with all the schemes but also within the schemes much more uh relevant and kind of connected to it so i mean it's obviously been it, it sounds like you've worked for quite a bit together in, in actually trying to figure out how that how you can actually put that into play and make that work and then of course adjusting to, to covid as everyone's had to adjust i guess in various ways um, I, mean, I'm, I, I, I should say, uh, perhaps I should have said this earlier, but my role is in transport strategy is to look after the monitoring and evaluation of major schemes um, rather than actually um, come up with the schemes themselves. So I'm the sort of monitoring and evaluation guy, really. And so the model that I kind of operate is to try and do the more major evaluations in partnership with academia because of what, what Matthew said, right. people get the best of both worlds. It's great for the students, it's great for the academics because they get access to the data, there's papers to be published. It's fantastic for the city council because, you know, it, it gives academic rigour to the evaluation work, which is which, which we do. And that, 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 that gives the funding bodies assurance that, uh, that, 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 the, that the money that they're their spending is, 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 is its impact being evaluated properly and, 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 and fairly. Um, so and it's one really of the best situations where all parties gain, really. Um, and the other thing to back up what, what, what Matthew just said so, all of you know, my colleagues who, who tend to put these bids together tell me that the future transport zone, uh, in terms of monitoring and evaluation, was, was the scheme with the most focus on that. That they'd have a bid for by, by, by several fold. You know, it really was about trying new, new stuff, and seeing how well it works. Um, and, and so there's been a big focus on monitoring and evaluation for the future transport zone because of that. Yeah, and it's been it really is a bit of a test and trial project to actually really yeah. learn rapidly from what I've picked up. We kind of really learn rapidly from it, implementing stuff. How does that work? Uh, how should we not do it if we were to take it forward? Uh, yeah, so, so yes, it's, it's not just what we do, it's how we implement it is of interest, because as I said, for e-scooters, for example, it's a, it's a completely new mode, so it's a learning, just, just putting those schemes in place is a learning process and, you know, documenting that, so people who come, people come, who, who put similar schemes in afterwards understand how not just what the impact's likely to be, but how they're implemented is, is very important. And just to put this a bit into context, so the, the future transport zones are in, still in their, they're, they're awarded, but they're still in their fairly early stages. And then with COVID, I understand, um, some of the zones have decided to do e-scooter trials, but actually I gather that there's been a, a kind of agreement that all of the zones would take that on. And I think that was a bit new for you. Do you want to give us a bit, given it was in the title, do you want to give us a bit more uh, of the kind of background to, to the e-scooter trial, how it landed yeah. with you and where you are with it? What the challenges yeah, I mean, I think these uses were coming anyway, but um, the advent of COVID and the need for social distancing and getting particularly key workers to work in a safe way has really bumped these scooters up the agenda and prompted the Department of Transport to, to, to push for them to be trialled within the, within the future transport zones. So I think that's how, that, that, that's why that's become a small but important component of, 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 of the zones. Um, I mean, there's a whole host of challenges with doing this. I mean, you start off with the procurement, you're procuring a completely new mode. So obviously that's a fair challenge. You know, what, you, what, what are you gonna put in your tender documents or that sort of thing? Um, what safeguards do you need to put in place? I mean, the, the, the trial in uh, Nottingham is, 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 is a higher one. So people can hire for individual journeys or they can hire an e-scooter and take it home for a period of time. Oh. Um, and it's a matter of monitoring how they're used and, 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 and any issues that arise with them. They, they've got quite sophisticated uh, GPS tracking devices and control devices embedded within them, much more so than any other mode, arguably. Um, so, you know, 
their, you can you can control their speed um, according to where they are. So one of the challenges was, uh, and one of the concerns, and perhaps uh, uh, what's caused the delay in these things being legalised was how they interact with vulnerable road users, pedestrians, and cyclists, and such like. So, for example, within the centre of Nottingham, um, we 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 speed restricted them to four miles an hour, so just fast walking pace. Uh, equally, they can't be taken out of the Nottingham city area. So Nottingham City Council Unit for Authority area, they simply they, they, they simply stop working. So obviously you need to communicate to the users what the what the what what, what to expect from these machines so they don't think they're broken or you know that sort of thing. Um, so there's a whole communications aspect. Um, and and Matt, I think as well, you've mentioned that there's uh, one thing. Uh, you've expected that the, the trial is at the e scooter trial is happening within the Nottingham city area, but that actually for the zone as a whole, there's been quite maybe this project, maybe other parts of it. It's quite a lot of interplay between complex changes. Do you want to? Yeah, to yeah, yeah I mean, you, you, you've got sort of the the, the transport geography, the, the sort of the, the, the Nottingham Derby region to contend with in that 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 um, you've got the three major cities of Nottingham, Derby, and Leicester not too far away from each other, and they're all sort of run slightly differently in terms of their their local council status and and how they're they're funded and to some degree their approach to transport and nottingham derby are obviously part of, of the ftz but we've also got um, east midlands airport linked into that which is um, nominally in leicestershire um, we've got issues around um, transport of nottingham being a, a unitary authority surrounded by boroughs that form part of greater nottingham um, that are in the county that sort of straddle along the A52 corridor that joins the two cities and, and travel between the two cities is one of the key elements of this. And then coming back to the, the key issue with the e-scooter the e trial, some of the major trip generators that you might expect for the e-scooter trial, which could very well perhaps be the University of Nottingham, sit right on the boundary between the city and the county areas. So so if sort of you know, people are wanting to use them to go from one one way out of the of the university into the county, then you, you've got to think about well, how how do you balance that in terms of the the limits of your trial? So there's there's quite a few sort of geographical issues associated with 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 how we can we can run the run the trials and how we can manage and maybe collect the data and, and evaluate that, particularly just given the nature of the way people use transport within the the conurbations that form part of the FTZ moving from place to place and I think it sounds as well like there's quite a bit of um you I think the system sounds like it might rely quite a lot on kind of GPS location to turn features on and off is that is that right yeah yeah so so the the the, the technology um we we'll thank Rosita at the, the council for some of this but um the technology that they're, they're going to put in means that the, the devices are effectively geofence so if they they stray too far they'll automatically switch off um so that comes back to the point Simon was making about um, about you know making sure the users are aware of what's going on and what the boundaries are for the systems. I think the other thing we should have added in as well is is that we potentially you know within the the FTZ got issues with 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 the new East Midlands hub of HS2 being slap bang in the middle of, of the zone as well. So how you integrate all that within the system, although it's potentially still a few years away, it's, it's all got to be taken into account but obviously the FTZ should be looking to link in to journeys and how you integrate all those systems within the within the zones so there's a there's a lot of conflicting sort of pressures on on how you can manage that the sorts of data that you get and how you will deal with that data across the across the wider conurbation yeah absolutely and, and I guess also finding uh suppliers for that and, and I guess perhaps some of the it, it, may, it may still be a bit early days for this yet but in terms of the, the suppliers for the actually scooters themselves and the kind of data that you can get your hands on um what you can kind of do with it as well may, may be some of a challenge in the future yeah yeah I'm, you know I, I, well I haven't seen that the specification for the for the scooters yet but you know you, you you've got to specify what you want very carefully and I'm sure all the the other zones you know bristol the west of england the southampton one and, and the, the west midlands one are all going to be doing their own thing with this or all be so you're all in the same struggling with the same the same <laughs> issues around well what exactly do we need and and how do we specify it as things develop yeah I, I think to some degree that 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 
this came in, as Simon said, on the, on the back of the COVID measures coming into place and the government's decided they want to do this, they want to trial it, they're going to take legislation through to legalise these things because obviously they're not currently street legal in the UK. Um, looking at what's been happening in the state. So some cities in the States have, have been using these for a while. I know a couple of years ago, I went to, to Berlin on holiday and I found these sort of e-scooters around the place wondering what on earth was going on and people zipping around on them. So it's, it's certainly something that, that that's clearly uh, been used across Europe and in the States. And we're, we're perhaps trying to catch up a little bit on their implementation yeah. within yeah. the UK. Yeah, Which is why the evaluation aspect of the East Eater trial will be important. So, I mean, um, we've always already talked the, the other side of having this quite sophisticated GPS capability and geofencing capability of them is that, is that obviously that system will render a lot of data that's useful to the evaluation about how you know, things like average journey length and you know, what, what, what sort of streets they're being used on, all that sort of thing. The telemetry, if you like, will come in. But I think there'll also have to be another phase where we go out and go a bit old school, if you like, and just simply ask people, you know, what do you think of this? Would you use it in the future? What were the pros? What were the cons? Et cetera, et cetera. So I think uh, would you combine and triangulate those two sources of information, You'll be you'll have a lot of uh, you'll have a lot you'll know a lot more about this sort of mode. And that that in for, that in turn will go forward. I would imagine and inform the wider legalisation of, of it as a mode of travel for private individuals to use and have their own excuses. So um, again, as with other elements of the FTZ, that's why the because it's so new, that's why the evaluation and monitoring is, 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 is so critical. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so your data hub, you were saying uh, previously that you, you kind of build in on some work that you'd done uh, so far and is presumably still carrying on with a different project with DFT. So that data hub is going to be, I think, sounds like quite critical for you guys. Do you want to share a little bit more about either where you are with that or it's kind of... Yeah, yeah sure. So um, the... the, the, the the data hub uh, brings together all sorts of transport data that was lying around in inverted commas anyway, were available in other individually, I should say, into one place and, and, and with the idea that eventually you can line this data up and help people make better travel decisions when they look at it. But in addition to that, we're developing a new capability in conjunction with um, uh, Vivasti Labs Limited who we've purchased a number of sensors off. And they have two types of sensor, one which counts and classifies traffic in real time, including, crucially, um, um, active modes like cycling and pedestrian. Um, and they're also working on ways to get their shape recognition technology to classify e-scooters separately. So that will build into the evaluation monitoring of e-scooters. So that's one type of sensor they have. The second type of sensor that we use are um, autom automatic number plate recognition, um, which is a bit more standard thing, really. Um, there's, there's quite a few providers that do provide AMPR capability where you can measure the time a, number, a registration plate takes to travel from A to B and just derive a, uh, a, 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 an average journey time across the segment. The actual traffic count sensors also take a spot speed to get an average spot speed where they cross the survey line. And so that's being, that's being um, uh, fed into the data hub along with uh, data that we purchased from Google, from the Google Maps API. So which underpins when you do your, 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 your Google Maps, how long will it take to get home? Yeah. Type of thing. That's, 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 that, that combines the average journey time that Google thinks and all the different segments that you'll traverse to get from work to home, for example. And so we're using that information to, 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 to try and build a really strong picture of, of, of what travel times are. Uh, um, so, so that will be, and then when you combine that with all your, your normal public transport type data, arrivals and departures from stops, um, et cetera, et cetera, and possibly model journey times for, 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 for cycles and walking, um, the idea is that that will then underpin um, the mobility as a service. 
I was just about to say that sounding like that. enhanced intelligence for the mobility as a service to function properly. Um, uh, and also, um, you know, obviously, particularly transport zone aside, as an authority that needs to plan in the long term, and we're developing our local transport plan for, for, for example, you know, having a very holistic idea of how your network operates in terms of traffic flow and journey times is a tremendous advantage to enable you to make better decisions about investments and projects going forward. So start a, a wide, this, this whole idea of real-time data and the data hub's got a, a much wider application than just the future transport zone in my view. So as somebody whose job it is to do monitoring and evaluation for large schemes and contribute to planning of others in, in, with, with logic mapping and such like, having a high quality data source about how your transport network operates in real time, where well, I mean, you, you can imagine the advantage that that would give you. Yeah, and you, so, Matt, sorry, did you want to come in? There? No, sorry, I'm just coughing. Was oh, coughing. Okay. <laughs> um, and you, I think you mentioned as well, Simon, that the, briefly earlier, that, that, that the mass project, mobility as a service project, is actually slightly different in this context, um, because it's actually looking from a, kind of doing it from a public authority side, um, which, I, which I guess ties in really nicely with what you've just been saying there about actually. Yeah, well, absolutely, yes. Yes. Yeah. Fab. Um, so, Matt, I mean, coming back to you, you've, you've mentioned some of the, the 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 challenges that you're facing with the um, the evaluation and, and monitoring criteria. Um, I mean, clearly, you the, the 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 connection and the collaboration between both Loughborough and, and Nottingham has really helped to kind of get under the skin of some of this. Um, are there any other bits you want to that's particularly um, uh, either challenging or interesting from your perspective that you haven't mentioned yet that you want to just um, it, it I, share with us? I, th I think one of, one of the things that, that we've been able to do, one of one of my colleagues is a um, um, professor in, in our transport group is, is an absolute whiz with statistics. And what we've been able to do is use some quite powerful statistical models in some of the evaluation that we've been done to really draw out some of the statistical significance of some of the interlinkedness between some of your control variables that we've, we've had within this so so journey time and some of the external constraints that have come in and and you know a lot of that came out of of simon's work from the from the on the wpl that we were able to do that we again sort of looking to take some of those methodologies forward into into some of the work that we're hoping to do here i think the other the other thing is is you know which I'm quite interested in at the moment is the um, the e-mobility hubs. You know, we, we've been looking at a lot of charging data, and yeah, the thing with these sorts of projects and, and the advantage of working with the city is we just get vast quantities of data. You get so much data that you know I've always taken the view you can never have enough data, but we we've got more data than we know what to do with. <laughs> and and you know, there's all sorts of things you can pick out of this in terms of how people use public charging networks and what we've been doing. But we can use that to then maybe look into some of the e-mobility hub issues about where you might locate them you know what some of the issues might be in terms of how they can benefit the population in terms of maybe issues related to air quality if you encourage more people to to use these e-scooters or, or you know move towards electric vehicles yeah. and, and things like that so there's there's huge amounts of scope within this i think the other thing that that struck me i watched one of the other talks this morning um within the within the, the conference and and it was talking about you know that, that it was to do with with um rail and rail innovation they're saying that you know what they've, they've been able to do with their innovation is, is have the chance to fail and i think you know to try stuff and not have the risk if it goes wrong and, and you know i think there is a, a little scope within the ftz's to allow us to try things and you know not have to be worried about it not maybe yeah, delivering okay. in the way that we want because there is scope to try things in here particularly around the e-scooter trials and that that's always that's always good you know there's often sometimes you you can be wearing my sort of academic hat a bit more conservative with a small c about what you might want to, to try because of the risk of getting it wrong and, and within this, there is there is some good scope to to have a try at, at certain things and see what they do and, and you know, again, coming back to the scooters, one of the key things is the fact that we're going to be able to learn from the other, the other people who are going to be trying this and share data between us and, and really try and drag some good solid information about how these things work and how people might use them 
maybe what some of the risks are, what some of the health and safety issues are about using them in, in the public realm and things like that. So there's lots of scope within this to do all sorts of different things. You know, it's a really fantastic opportunity to bring out some, some future change, if you like, within within the different approaches to transport. And you know, urban transport is probably a, one of our more neglected areas of our transport systems within our major conurbations in recent years. So it's, it's good news. And I think also, I mean, it's a really important point, you, you touched on it there about the, uh, yes, the, the um, uh, feeling safe about the fa failure or testing quickly and learning, but also the ability, you said you had a load of data when you can kind of look at that, but actually having, I think you've got quite a multidisciplinary team, haven't you, Matt? So you've got quite a lot of insight together with Nottingham. Uh, it's not necessarily just what it perhaps uh, some might think it's not just a kind of bunch of academics looking at some data and trying to work out what to do with it you've actually got insights from quite different perspectives to actually start to integrate some of that into the thinking that that that, that not so having to go through anyway uh, yeah. Um, yeah. and yeah we, we can we can bring our skills to to the benefit of all the skills that you've got within the city council teams that not only are planning this you know nottingham is a very forward-looking transport authority in terms of all that that yeah, and a successful one in, in getting all this innovative funding for their various projects that they try. You know, be that the tram, be it some of the electric vehicle stuff they've been doing, the, the, the other projects that Simon has mentioned. And, you know, what it does is it actually gets you real data on real projects that you can really start to dive into and, and pull out the key messages rather than just sort of sit coming up and theorising about things. It's actually stuff where you can show impact and you can show that that you know these changes do deliver something that is important or worthwhile in terms of thinking about how we get around in our major conurbation. So it's it's good for that. It's often a um, you know it, it's often a, a, a more broadly, not specifically with the FTZ, just more generally that ability for academia and public sector, I mean any groups, but we happen to be talking about those two here to actually really interplay and understand each other a lot more. It could always be stronger. Um, I, th I think Simon, you might have you might have been the linchpin to some degree in this kind of. Well, connection. yeah, I mean, it's been very interesting because you know it, um, I have a foot in both camps because I'm also a visiting research fellow at Loughborough, so I am sort of a kind of part time academic as well as being somebody who works for the local authority doing doing these sort of practical stuff that needs needs to be done. And from my perspective. The partnership between, say, a local authority and academia is beneficial, not just in the way that Matthew said, but, it, but, but academia brings in a broader perspective, which I feel is sometimes lacking in, 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 in people who are very focused, quite rightly, on delivering and, and bidding for the immediate, the immediate schemes and the pots of money that are out there. And having that academic discipline that says, right, now, before you do anything, go and read all about it the literature search brings a fantastically broad perspective to what you're doing and a deeper understanding of, of, of what the pros and cons are of, of, of doing that. And I think that's the strength of the approach yeah. um, from my point of view. It's, it's, just, um, it's perhaps a, not a unique perspective. I'm sure there's others that uh, do similar things, but you know, having a foot in each camp, yeah. so yeah. to speak. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's really cool. From the local authority point of view, to, to go back to to the workplace parking levy, which is perhaps the completed example of this model of uh, doing an evaluation. You know, we we got out of that, you know, three or four peer reviewed papers to underpin the rationale of the whole idea and explore the pros and cons of it. They, they've gone through the review process, they're published, you know, they're validated and they're there for others to use. In a, in a in a in an in give an impartial view of, of, of what's going on, and I think that's a very very good way to deliver knowledge and learning from these more innovative schemes. Because actually, the workplace parking levy in not not in the workplace parking levy is the only one of its kind in in, in Europe, really, um, and it's uh, could be a model for, for for significant amount of funding for local transport authorities. And then the next thing that comes along that is innovative, of course, is the future transport zone. So the, the two the, 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 the two are very similar um, 
beasts in terms of doing the evaluation and monitoring. And, the, and obviously this, this, this session is a bit about the challenges of, of, of collecting data and analysing it and, monitor, and, and doing your evaluation. And when the key components for that are how do you know, so you obviously work out what, what sort of things will change, you expect to change and you measure them like uh, congestion or air quality or public transport patronage. And you see these things going up or down or staying the same. And, they, and you see them do, they've done that in the sort of period before and after and during periods of you implementing these large projects. But how do you actually know that those changes are due to the project that you put in? Because in the meantime, there's all sorts of things going on, especially at the moment. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so, so that is so. So this idea of taking into account all these all these external changes, and, and trying to provide evidence of cause and effect for this scheme that you're actually evaluating is a big technical challenge from an evaluation point of view. Doubly so at the moment because. COVID is about the most biggest contextual change that certainly I will ever experience in my career, I'm sure. Well, I hope it is anyway. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think, I think you know, that, that's a, a really important point because with all of these sorts of, of, of projects, you've got to say, well, where's my starting point? What's my baseline? What's, what's your, your control, if you like, before you then look to see what, what, what the effect of your intervention has been and and our baseline has been fundamentally changed in the last six months as everybody will fully understand you know we, you know even well we all know what what the the situation is and our own experiences of using transport and the way people are getting about the shifted so so where where do we where do we take our zero point for this where where do we start the evaluation of the baseline do we so, that, so there's some real challenges around that as well in terms of the things that Simon's just been saying that we're, we're going to have to try and wrestle with when we get stuck into this a bit further. Yeah, I was going to say, have you solved that already, Matt? But I think that would well, be... No, no, I did. <laughs> the, 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 the FTZ funding came through. I can't remember whether it was shortly before or shortly after we went into, into before, lockdown. Shortly before, yes. It, but it was about, it was, it was around that time sort of, late February, early March time. Yeah. And, and, you know, you, you've, you've suddenly got something that has fundamentally changed everything. So, so, you know, we're going to have to think about, well, do we go back to, to what it was like before? Do we wait and then do another baseline survey in due course as we look at the implementation of these things? Do we need to revisit some of the things we're thinking about doing on the basis of some of these changes? So, you know, and that's already happened by the integration of the e-scooters to some degree, I suppose. Yes. So there's, there's lots of challenges ahead with this, which everybody who's trying to do any transport projects is going to be faced with, because what is the new normal? I guess it perhaps just might be slightly more amplified on the, na the very nature of the FTZs, being that it is about future stuff. So, so the risk of the uncertainty is, is just all that much higher. And, and like you said, the, the, not knowing what the baseline is um, <laughs> or trying to figure out a way to, to kind of assess it in a different way without that consistent mm. baseline is definitely a challenge. So it's so, like, go on, Simon, yeah. I was going to say one thing that perhaps I haven't made clear here, and, and I should have done, is uh, uh, my comments have been extremely not in focus because that's, 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 that's who I work for. But I um, um, should stress that the Future Transport Zone is a, is a, is a, cross, is a sort of cross-regional scheme. So we, 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 we've gained this funding not on our own, but with in cooperation with 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 Derby Derby City Council and the and, and, and the and the county councils and, and, and one of the, the the other unique selling point of it is that it will be interesting to see how these measures how the impact of these measures vary according to the various and diverse geographic or locations within the zone. So you've got some urban, you've got some into urban, you've got some rural, you've got out, out of town uh, growth points like East Midlands Gateway and things like that. So, so first of all, we do have partners, which I've not really done the right thing by, by discussing too much here because it's, it's been very Nottingham focused, but also that is one of the learning points we hope to get from the schemes, how it affects differential. So one of our e-mobility hubs, for example, will be in a traditional residential area of Derby 
rather than a new build one. So, so things like that, it's, sta it's spread across the region. Yeah, fabulous. I think we're kind of getting out of time. Are there any final points that either of you would like to, or, or comments or reflections you'd just like to add before we close? Oh, well, hopefully we've given you a, a bit of a, a flavour of, of what we're trying to do and maybe some of the challenges that we're facing and, and some of the sort of the constraints. And I suppose you know, if anybody watching is interested, you know, please get in touch with us. And, and um, if you've got any questions, again, we can try and respond to those if you, you get in touch with us in due course. And, have, uh, people got, have people got access to our contact details, for example, as part of the... Uh, yeah, so you'll both be registered on the site so people can look up both of you uh, on the attendees section. Um, and there's, I think there's meeting requests and, and connection requests through there. There's also the uh, the chat feature through this uh, session as well. Um, yeah. And, you know, just to back up Simon's point, this is this is across, you know, the, the East Midlands region, major cities and, and you know, the, the key economic drivers across across Nottingham, Derby and, and sort of that area around East Midlands Airport now, which as Simon said, East Midlands Gateway is turning into a major logistics hub now, yeah. where the, the M1 comes up up through and you know, there's a huge amount of development that's all got to be integrated within within the zone. So there's some significant challenges that we're facing, we're trying to, trying to wrestle with. So it's, it's going to be an interesting couple of three years. It's fantastic. It's really been really great to, to learn more from you both um, about, you know, the excitement, the challenge, the opportunity of it all. Um, and I wish you, your partners and, and all the others as part of the other FTZs, uh, you know, the best of luck with, with developing this and us all seeing the fruits from it. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.